Okay, so in this video we're going to show how to do uh, wind triangles, which is accomplishes the same steps as the wind side of the E6B, but without using the E6B at all. Uh, so with the wind triangle, we're going to get the same information and spit out the same information, but we're just going to use a blank sheet of paper and our plotters. And um, one thing to note here to begin is that this is the only time I'll tell you ever to use a different scale on the plotters. So with our typical flight planning, we talk about how important it is to use uh, statute miles, I'm sorry, nautical miles uh, when you measure distances and on the uh, sectional scale we want to make sure we measure nautical when we're doing our charts. But for this practice through these wind triangles it's actually easiest to use the statute mile scale um, and actually the wax scale on statute miles. So if you look really closely here you can see that the statute mile scale down here has a very small scale which we need to use Shown on the bottom, so we'll use the 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 scale here to do our wind triangles. This is the only time you're actually going to use that uh, for arrow 2230, uh, but it is useful to make the wind triangle small enough to fit on a, a sheet of paper. Um, so to start, I'll give you the data. So just like with our other wind problems, we are given a true course, a wind direction, velocity, and a true airspeed. And so after we're done with this, what we should come up with is a wind correction angle and thus a true heading. And just like our E6B, we're actually going to find a ground speed also. So we're going to put the same data in that we put our E6B using our plotter to make a wind triangle and get the same data out. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, first and foremost, we've got our true course here, 120. I know for a fact that that's eastward. Uh, 120 degrees, that's almost east, that's south, east, southeast. So I'm actually going to begin with my blank sheet of paper and I'm going to give myself a reference to true north, just like we use on our charts. And since I know we're going east, I'm going to give myself room to work to the east. So I'm going to put my true north line on the left side of my sheet here. And just do a line straight north to give you a reference to what north would be. And I usually just draw north to remind myself what I'm doing there. So I have my reference to true north. And now we need to pick a spot on that um, line to begin, a starting point. So because I know I'm going eastward and my winds are out of the south, uh, I'm going to just pick a point here and make that my, my start point, my beginning point. So from that point, we're then going to reference our true course line. So just like we do with the plotters otherwise, we're going to put our true course line from there out to the right, uh, 120. So let me find my 120 here. There it is. And I see from there 120 is out this way. I can make a little reference point here, or a reference mark. And then this true course line, this first line that we draw, we're just going to draw it out as far as we can to the right. So I'm going to try and line this up here and draw it out as far as I can. To the end of the sheet. And then we can label that as a true course. Not perfectly straight, but you get the idea. So true course here, one, two, zero degrees. And I like to draw arrows just so I know exactly what's going on. Uh, so our true course line has been laid out. Again, that line's as long as we can possibly make it. I might try and straighten it out here a little bit. So we've got that line drawn. And the second thing we do is we need to put our winds in. Well, the winds in this case were out of 220 at 25 knots. So they're out of 220, wind direction out of 220. So 220 is from the south, southwest. And what we do for the winds is we're going to move, uh, we're going to go in the direction the winds would blow a balloon if you released a balloon from our starting point. So I know that 220 is from the southwest. Somewhere down here, we'll get exact here in just a moment. And so we're actually going to draw this line the opposite direction, uh, the direction the balloon would drift if it were in that wind. So to put our winds in, we're just going to find that 220 direction, uh, just like we did our true course. So 220, right about there. Have a good reference. And now we can have a good reference for the direction of the wind up here on top. Just draw a little reference line. So it's going to be in that direction. And now we need to actually draw the line for the 25 knots, uh, the velocity of the winds. So I'm just going to line it up here from my start point to that reference. We have the direction in. 
and we need to make this line 25 knots. So from zero down here to 25 is going to be about right there. If you can see, I'm at 25 here. So that is going to be my wind side of this wind triangle. And I'll label it. And put a nice little dot at the end of that mark. So our wind has been factored in, and we also have our true course set. Uh, we have a few more steps here to go. So once we have the winds factored in, we have our reference point for how the winds are going to affect this flight. Uh, we now just need to connect this point to our true course point, and we need to connect it at our true airspeed unit. Now, true airspeed was given. True airspeed here is 90 knots. So using that same scale that we just used, the, uh, the statute scale on the inside here, the smallest scale possible, we're going to connect our dot we just made with the true course line at 90 knots. And so you can see here, right about there, our starting point is good, and we count to 90, and we're going to connect these two lines with our final triangle line. And we can label that, so that's our true airspeed. of 90 knots. So at this point, our triangle is completed, but we need to interpret the data. Um, at this point, we need to figure out exactly what is this heading now that we factored in the winds. And to do that, we're doing the same thing that we did with the true course. So we've got a reference to north up here, and we just need to go to our north line along our newest, newest line that we made line it up just like we would determine a true course on your sectional chart and from there we go straight up to see our true heading in this case about a 135 is going to be our true heading we're just lining up that same line just like we did to determine a true course so our true heading is 135 and so now that we have our true course and our true heading the difference in those two is our wind correction so our wind correction angle, in this case, is going to be 15 degrees right or further south. And I always like to put plus when I think about wind correction angles. We're going to have to correct 15 degrees to the right for the winds in order to end up at our destination. Uh, so as far as course goes, if the wind correction angle is 15 right, just like with conventional E6B, the true course was uh, 120. Of course, the wind correction angle 15 right, and our true heading, as we just saw, about a 135 degrees. And the last little step here is uh, pretty simple. All we need to do now is we still have to find our ground speed. So in order to determine ground speed, we're just going to measure the length of our original true course line from the starting point to where we intersected out here, using the exact same scale that we used for the other two measurements. So just use the plotter like a ruler here again. And we're going to go back to the starting point. I have to move my paper over. And measure the distance to where we intersected with our third triangle there. So we've got a ground speed of 103. hundred three knots ground speed just by measuring the distance from our starting point to where our third side of our triangle met there and that's how you do a wind triangle